Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 Digital Artist Desk Tour. So I wanted to go for a much more candid and informative approach this time with this video. So today to keep things as short as possible, we're going to limit everything to what is actually making physical contact with my desk as is right now. The only exception will be my chair and my footstool, which we will talk about later on in the video. Speaking of which, shout out to Flexispot, the main sponsor of this video. If you're more interested in an uh, in-depth video about my workflow or my overall studio setup, because a few of those things have changed as well, let me know in the comments, leave a like, and uh, maybe I'll try to push that out too. So like I said, we're going to start off with what is on top of my desk, and then we're going to move left to right in three sections, left, center, and right. So one of the first things that you'll see on the left side of my desk is my Peak Design bags. So these are really, really nice for carrying and protecting small but important items like storage devices, cables. I have a spare ID in there, a lot of different things, and it just makes it super easy to go from different levels of portability as I'm moving or traveling around. Next to them, you will notice that I have a 12 South iMac stand. So this is originally to be used with an iMac where you slide it in the top. But as you may remember from last year, I love the look of it, the walnut finish on the front, and it's great for storing items I don't plan to use in a long time, but I do want to have quick access to them when I do need them. In front of that, you'll see I have a little desk tripod. It's the small rig. 3033 model and I love these little things because they're super robust all metal and if I just need to hold my phone up like a little selfie stick or I just want to prop up my camera above my desk or a different surface and have something I know is going to be reliable it does the job and it has two little settings for the height as well which is really cool. Sitting on one of these tripod things is a Nanlite Pavo tube. So I use the 30X variant with the RGB color. I have two of the two foot ones and two of the four foot ones, and I love these. These lights allow me to get relatively soft lighting without having to take up so much space. Now on both sides of my desk, you'll see that I have two Vivo pegboards. These things are a little bit tricky to set up, but once you do, they're super easy to apply because you just clamp them to the desk. They have just completely revolutionized my experience at my desk because I can use a ton of little magnets and little screws to just put stuff there that I need here and there once in a while that end up cluttering my desk and I can just keep it up there and it stays there and it's easy to see. And yeah, if you have ADHD, this is perfect because it will be in sight and therefore in mind and then you always know where to find it. So I have my I have my wallet, I have my keys the three tools I need the most, my screwdriver, pliers, and um, some Allen wrenches, scissors. You know, you're always looking for the scissors, right? Well, there's the tape right next to it. So it's just, it works so great. I think these also add to the really industrial, yet clean, modern, and functional look that I'm going for because I'm not sacrificing functionality at all as much as I can. I want it to work smoothly, but look as good as possible while doing it. Next up, we have the Elgato Stream Deck XL. So I use this for control of my streams when I'm switching scenes in OBS. I highly recommend you check out the one with Bear. She has a studio tour available on her Instagram stories, and she goes into detail because she's got hers decked out. Now, before we get into my main center setup with my iPad, let's talk about the centerpiece to my desk, the Hexcal Studio. So I'm still rocking this as the main feature from last year. I love the strip light look. I love the smooth, it almost looks like concrete, the type of concrete that I like anyway, the slate finish on it, the gray, but really deep dark gray feel, that coolness. It feels very architectural, very brutal, brutalistic architecture. I just love it. It's It feels great and I feel like it grounds everything at my desk. Next to that, you'll probably notice the lotion that I have at my desk, and I really recommend this lotion brand. It's Course X. This is, I think it was intended for use with your face, but I use it with, for my hands because, you know, it's it's really important. You know, I film my hands all the time. I gotta have many level hands as often as I can, even though I don't even get close on my own. 
In front of the hex cowl off to the left side again, you'll notice that I have a few bags there and these don't really carry much right now, but I use them for transporting a lot of little small things that were very important. So one of them was filled with cables at a certain point. Some of them are filled with some of the grips and adapters I need when I'm building and taking down little camera sets for filming things. Now you'll notice at the center of the centerpiece, I've got another iPad and this is an iPad mini. I believe it's the sixth generation and it pretty much just stays there <laughs> to be used as a clock. But I got it mainly for my course because I don't want to be overlooking people who don't have the maxed out iPad when I'm preparing the course documents. I also use it for references when I'm painting from time to time. Next to that, you have the audio work horse of my entire setup, which is the Mix Pre 6 II. This thing is great. It can record super, super, super high quality formats. On the right side of the hex cal, you'll notice that there is a V-mount battery charging, and that is by Small Rig. And I love this one because it just is solid at showing you the readout of the energy left or the energy that's being drained. And I find that extremely convenient for timing my setups. And I've completely switched to V-mount batteries now instead of using power cables to power everything. So let's backtrack a little bit and then look back behind the hex cowl and you can see all of the different cables and ports going in but you can also see my ergotron dual monitor arm mount which is just doing an incredible job holding up my two apple studio displays now a lot of cables come in and out of these displays so i've tried to cable manage them as best as possible but i love them because they give you such a nice high glossy sharp deep rich image they look like mini LED screens when you hold them up to a regular LCD screen that has a matte coating on it. It's just so much better. I find glare is such a non-issue, especially since I'm facing the window so I can get some sunlight. They also work as mini docks. They each give you three extra ports to use with your MacBook if you're using them with that or your Mac and I find that incredibly useful. The speakers are so good that I could take my speakers off of my desk and they have built in cameras just in case I may need to use a regular webcam for a quick zoom call. So behind them, you'll notice two Vivo monitor shelf mounts. These are basically screwed in between the VESA mount and the monitor itself. And they allow me to mount little things up there right behind my monitor in a really clean and tidy way. Regarding the Atomos Ninja 5, I have two of them. I really love them. They show me a nice clear image wherever I am of what's on my camera and they can record to files that are not only small, but also really, really easy for my computer to use. Now on the taller neck portion of the dual monitor arm, you're going to see that I have a Manfrotto super clamp that is holding a Manfrotto articulating arm that is holding a Sennheiser MKH416 microphone. And so I have this really nice setup here so that when I want to just sit at my desk and use it more as an office, I can push that back and bring my monitors together and it's just completely out of the way. And it's super, super great and useful. Now let's get into the actual real workstation component of my desk. To the left of the mouse pad, we have the Half Moon slash Moonlander keyboard. So I use this keyboard for all of my keyboard shortcuts. I love it. The blue means I'm in Photoshop mode or pretty much generic mode. The green is DaVinci Resolve. The pink is Clip Studio Paint and the purple is Procreate. Yes, so I can use it on any device I want to because it has all of its onboard memory isolated and it doesn't need software. It's just flashed directly using a flashing tool that works on Windows or Mac. Next to it, you'll see I have an Apple Space Gray keyboard and trackpad. I love these things. The look that they have, especially in the Walnut Grove made trays is just phenomenal. Now, in addition to the trackpad, I have the Logitech MX Master 3 for when I need more precision than the trackpad will allow and I need to drag things across larger distances. Now, this is skipping ahead a bit, but I wanted to mention that I have a second keyboard. This is the Corsair K70 Pro Mini Wireless, and I love this thing because it's so small and compact. Now, all of these peripherals are sitting on the newly released Hexcal desk mat, which is this really lovely leather feeling desk mat. I just love how this one is so much easier to clean and it has a thickness to it that's just nice to the touch. 
The hex cowl wrist rest as well is quite nice to put your hands into. It just sinks so deeply and nicely in there. It feels like a little bed for your wrists. Now in front on the left side of my Hexcal Studio, you will see I have the Anchor MagSafe charger. So this thing is amazing. It can charge my AirPods, my watch, and my phone all at the same time. And the MagSafe magnet is solid. I love the design. The color almost matches perfectly with the slate gray Hexcal finish. Before we get into the right side, let's finish up the main event my iPad Pro. I have the latest and greatest 12.9 inch iPad Pro M2 model and it's maxed out with two terabytes of storage. It is sitting in either the Sketchboard Pro or the Sketch Slate. Now the Sketch Slate is lighter and it looks a lot better on camera if I'm gonna be honest. Um, I almost regret putting the stickers on it but I don't. And then the Sketchboard Pro is much more ergonomic and the concept of having this extra space for my arms to rest as I'm painting is just perfect for me. Now, if you're wondering how I stand it up, I have gone through a number of different methods, but now I have settled on using another iPad stand to be the stand for my iPad stand. <laughs> But this is one by Lulu Look and it's magnetic. The iPad just snaps onto the front face of it. But I've modded it to where I've taped down a three pound solid iron brick to weigh it down. And then what I did is I took the Anchor 556 USB C dock and taped it to the back neck of it. And it looks really nice, as well as give me the ability to just turn a cable around, plug it into my iPad, and now my iPad is connected to a dock that can give it power, send the screen information to my MacBook so I can stream and record the screen, and also receive information from my shortcut keyboard, all while looking really clean. So I can use this as an iPad stand, or I like to kind of fold it up in a certain position where it serves as a support for my sketchboards. And so I can just move it closer to me if I want the sketchboard to be at a higher angle. And thanks to the grip of the leather and the added grip of the bottom that I added and the three pound weight, all the force gets transferred directly to the table without the desk creaking. So it works out fantastic. Now, the one key component to all of this is that I have a little strip of metal that I use that super intense like black tape that you usually use to stick car parts back on with. I also drilled in nails very, very carefully so that the heads would kind of keep that metal edge in place and not let it wiggle around. And the nails are quite long, so it's very, very, very secure. This is what the front of my sketchboards rest on so that I can just have an amazingly sturdy drawing experience. Now you'll see I have a few modifications as well on the sketchboards themselves where I have either magnets, metal plates, or Velcro attached. And so this gives me a lot of different options for where to put my keyboards. It looks nice and I can remove it when I don't need it and it still looks good. So as we move to the right side of my desk, we will see that I have a Sigma 24 to 70 Sony E-mount f2.8 lens. Now behind that, you'll just see a little old plant there just chilling. And then next to that, you will see my M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch. And I can easily edit and paint on this thing and stream high quality bit rates to Twitch and YouTube without a hitch. And it only makes noise still after years later when I'm editing something um, or rendering something. Sorry, not editing. So it's it's really been an amazing machine and it's super compact and easy for me to take around because I have it sitting on an innovative DigiPlate Pro. So this was a really great investment that allows me to put my laptop anywhere in my studio without worrying about it falling down. Next to that, you'll see I have a Grovemade iPad stand. I still have this thing from last year. It looks amazing. It's super sturdy. And I now use it to hold up my sketchboards in a different way when I want them out of the way, but still close by. Now, let's talk about the microphone that I'm actually speaking on. So this is the Shure SM7B that I use for, it's the first big boy microphone I got. It's an XLR microphone and it's going into my Mix Pre 6 that I mentioned earlier. It has just become my main driver once again because I just miss that creamy feel that it adds to my voice. It's sitting on a Rode boom arm and I love it because even though it does take up a lot of space compared to lower profile boom arms, it can stretch really far and it easily carries the weight of my Shure SM7B without me having to even adjust it at all. 
As far as audio goes, I've now switched my daily driver to AirPods Max and I love how they feel. They're heavy, but I don't feel the weight. I have two other microphones. One of them is called the Mizi 99 Classics. I've had these for about two years now and they've held up really well. I love them for just when I want to enjoy music purely just to immerse myself in it. My other headphones are the Sennheiser HD 660 S's and I have those on right now. One of the things you'll see on the right pegboard that I really love is the SanDisk 4 terabyte external SSD. These things are the SSDs that I trust to edit off of. They are super, super reliable. Now, next to my MacBook, you will see the, or under it actually, you'll see an OWC Thunderbolt 4 dock. So this is the only of the five Five docks that I've tried that works near perfectly with my MacBook Pro. This dock lets me plug in my studio displays and they both work perfectly as if they were plugged directly into the MacBook. By the way, the small iPad stand is created by Ugreen and it looks really nice in space gray. So now that I've talked about what's on my desk, let's talk about the desk itself and its accessories. So the desk was kindly sent over by Flexaspot and I asked them to send me the biggest desk they could because I had to let go of my previous kitchen table sized, literally a kitchen table desk. And so this desk is the dark bamboo variant at 35 by 79 inches. That's a really nice deep and wide desk for me to be able to put a lot of things on the desk and have them out of the way. What's really interesting about it is that it has this nice dual chamfered beveled edge that makes it look thinner than it really is because it has to be quite a bit thicker to support this size. What's really cool about it is that it's super light so it's easy to set up since it's made of bamboo but it also seems to have a hollow core that I noticed when I was drilling into it. Now I rarely use it as a standing desk due to all of my equipment if I've already had a few mistakes where I just hear a loud bang or a crack when I'm trying to raise the desk and it does this automatic lowering feature to keep whatever it noticed was an obstacle safe. But when I do use it to stand, I do really enjoy it. And right now I've settled everything so I can trust when I move it up and down to stand. And it's been really nice, speedy, not too slow, not too fast, not too loud transition. Now for under the desk, you'll see I have two Vivo drawers, small, but they do the job. Now let's get into the cable management. I did some cable management, so it's quite chaotic. I used a ton of little zip ties and sticky little clips and stuff because it's been a several week long process figuring out how to best optimize the desk. And so cables are always moving around. Once things settle down in the next few weeks, then I could decide to do some more prettier cable management. I also wanted to point out that the goal is never to have cable management perfectly looking, it's just to have it optimized and clean so that it's organized. I simply use too many devices for there to be perfect cleanness. This is a studio, right? So compared to your typical person who is working with a computer that has a mouse and keyboard and everything else that they may need, like a microphone or a camera is built into the monitor itself, they can have a really nice clean aesthetic setup. The less technical stuff you have and the less content creation you're doing at that actual place, the more clean the setup can be. But if you're actually doing producing things there, it's not that clean, right? So. If you look at an audio musician setup, you'll notice that it has that kind of similar vibe. They're editing, mastering, but also creating at the same time. So if you're doing something similar to me, don't worry too much about it looking super clean and aesthetic. Focus on the function. And then as you get the function down, focus on clarity and ease and smoothness, and that will give you the aesthetics. Now let's get into the chair. Flexispot sent over their new office chair, EOC 5002 that they wanted me to test out. And crazy enough, I did not expect to like this this much. It's more comfortable than my $1,500 Herman Miller. I think I'm still paying for that thing, I don't know. This thing, just the bottom seat and the lumbar support just feels amazing. It has more options for adjustment for the seat itself. And it just, it just feels better. And the headrest is also a game changer for me. The two issues I do have with it though are the high hand rests. They are just super, super high. And I like to scoot under my desk so I can get close to my iPad, but almost every single time I either bump into them or they scuff underneath and it just feels like I'm trapped at my desk because if they could just be adjusted to move down one more inch, I think this would be an easy issue because at my seating height, 
raising the desk higher isn't really practical. Last but not least, to finish up my desk setup, my desk tour is my footstool. It's by Human Design and it's fun. Well, that will be all everyone, ladies and gentlemen, humans and aliens. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you had any more questions in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. And if you need any tips or want to see more in-depth, detailed information about how I actually workflow or one of you wanted to see my actual day in the life. My day in the life is really weird and hectic, so it's going to be half a meme if I try to do something like that. But it would be something I would be down to do if more people wanted to see that. So I'll see you all in the next one or I'll see you in person soon. Maybe. Who knows? Come to Lightbox and keep drawing, stay positive and take care. Bye.